so let us see how pressure and temperature affects a px or a txy diagram naturally when we increase pressure on a particular of a particular species its boiling point will increase so you know t1 set t2 set which are the, which are the extremes of the diagram will naturally increase so say for example this is a txy diagram at a given pressure pa and k corresponds to t1 set of component 1 and h corresponds to t2 set of component 2 as I increase the pressure naturally this will increase in this direction and this will increase in this direction what will happen due to that is that as we increase the pressure the boiling points would increase however at some point in time uh, the temperature would be so high that it will not reach the you know uh, uh, one of the ends of the diagram what happens here is that as you increase the pressure the mixture may attain a critical point and beyond which you can, will not be able to uh, you know distinguish between vapor and liquid and you may not extend it to this side as you further increase the temperature the critical temperature of both the components are you know are attained and you are not in a position to uh, you know reach either side of the uh, you know uh, this diagram and you will get only partially two phase system one more impact of you know effect of pressure on TXY diagram is not only it moves upward but uh, the diagram shrinks and because of that the you know vapor liquid separation becomes difficult and uh, you know the other way of looking at the same is that as I decrease the pressure the diagram will be like uh, the separation will be easier so there are basically three impact of pressure on TXY diagram one the diagram moves upward two as you increase the pressure the separation becomes difficult and if the increase in pressure is so much that you know critical point of one of the components is achieved then uh, you know you will not be able to uh, attain the full range of ELE for that particular compound and if uh, pressure is very high and critical temperature of both the components are attained you won't be able to reach to both the sides of the you know uh, 0 and 1 of the diagram. Similar effect is observed when you uh, you know increase the temperature for a PXY diagram. So, uh, you know, basically this helps us uh, when we want to, you know, uh, make the separation easy and we see the impact of pressure on the diagram. Moving further, let us see how to, uh, you know, we have seen the binary PX1 and TX1 diagram. Let us see how to construct them theoretically. Now, see, uh, as far as degrees of freedom are concerned, we are, we are having two degrees of freedom. Uh, out of pressure, temperature, x1 and y1, we can fix any two variable and we can calculate other two with the help of Raoult's law. When we would like to generate, you know, a PXY data, PXY diagram is is always, uh, you know, constructed at an ideal, uh, at a fixed temperature. So, the first thing we do is we always fix a temperature. However, we are left with the second degree of freedom. The second degree of freedom can be x, can be y or can be p. However, the best choice as far as the you know ease of calculation is concerned is x it doesn't mean that you should always fix x but you can you can fix p you can fix y and you can you can you can uh, still get the same answers however uh, mathematically uh, easiest way is to do is to go with this now as we know that uh, vapor pressure is only a function of temperature so the moment we fix temperature the next step should always be to calculate vapor pressure of both the components using Antonis equation that is this uh, so you substitute the fixed temperature here you get p1 set and you get p2 set <coughs> the uh, best uh, part about this calculation when it is the generation of pxy since the temperature is going to remain fixed p1 set p2 set will not change for the entire set of the calculation third is you have Raoult's law with you you manipulate Raoult's law element vapor phase friction and you know uh, you can just get uh, the value of uh, you know equation in terms of pressure as a function of x1 P1 set X2 P2 set. So you get pressure from this. X1 is a fixed value. X2 is 1 minus section. P1 set P2 set are based on the fixed value of temperature. So this gives you equilibrium value of P. Now once you have got P, X1 and P1 set, you can very easily calculate Y1 using this equation. This gives you one VLE data. Now uh, you know what is our aim is to generate a PX1 P, X1, Y1 diagram at given temperature. So what do we do now is we change the liquid phase composition from x1 like initially suppose we started off with 0.1 now we say 0.2 this step is not required reason being temperature is same but we can come to this since x1 has changed from 0.1 to 0.2 
pressure will change and since pressure will change y1 will change come to this step again change x1 make it to 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 for every x1 uh, and fix t you get different values of y1 make a table it becomes your uh, you know pxy diagram which when you plot it looks like this however generation of Uh, construction of TXO diagram for ideal binary system uh, can be done in a slightly different form. TXO diagram is being drawn at a constant pressure, so naturally we fix pressure first. Now the choice remains uh, to go with X, Y or T. We can go with X, we can go with Y, but the problem is whenever we are not having temperature and we choose X or Y, the you know uh, calculation becomes iterative and we will see this as we proceed further for known ideal systems. However, in binary system, uh, for ideal uh, binary system, uh, we, have, we have discussed that you know when we draw a TXY diagram, a TXY diagram will always lie between uh, the values of T1 set and T2 set. Why generally we don't fix both pressure and temperature for a given binary system? The reason for that is that you know the range is not fixed. So if I want to fix a you know value of temperature, it can be any value. I have no range with me. As against that, for x1 and y1, the range is fixed 0 to 1. So I must start with 0 or 0 0.25 or 0 0.3 or 1, whatever. But the best part in uh, ideal binary TXY diagram is that the diagram is always between the two extreme values of temperature. That is this. Like this is one temperature. Sorry, it's not a. This is one temperature. And this is another temperature. So I have got this and this. How do I calculate that? I calculate that with the help of Antoine's equation. So uh, you know I calculate boiling points of both the components. This gives me the range for fixing temperature. So I get P. Then I this is how I get temperature. And now what I do is I fix a temperature between these two values. The reason for the reason I can do that is because I know that the temperature for an ideal binary system will always lie between T1 set and T2 set. So I fix a temperature, so now I have got value of P and T. I can't fix any other because my degree of freedom are only two. Using, you know, manipulating your uh, Raoul slope, you know, you first calculate vapor pressure, and manipulating a Raoul slope, you can calculate X1. Wherein everything is on right hand side is known. You know pressure, you know P1 set, P2 set based on this fixed value of T. And once you know P, X, and T, you can always calculate Y as X1 P1 set upon P. And then you can repeat the same procedure by, you know, fixing another value of T. So now what you do is P, T and X1, Y1. However, P in this system is fixed. So you change various values of T starting from T1 set to T2 set and you get corresponding X and Y. So it's very simple to generate PXY and TXY diagram for an ideal binary system. <coughs> Next set of diagram is a PT diagram. Now we know that, you know, um, a PT diagram for a pure component system a you know, will, when your liquid and vapor saturation line are superimposed on each other. So this RC1 here and UC2 here, they corresponds to pure component 1 and pure component 2. So this is what we have already seen when we have talked about pure component fluid phase equilibrium. When plotted PT, we have plotted something like this, you know. And this is a diagram which is what I am talking about. Now, <coughs> Uh, when we do this, like before we discuss about this, let us go back to our PXY diagram. You know, this is our PXY diagram, isn't it? Now, if uh, you know, I draw a straight line. This is one pressure, and this is another pressure. Right? This is my bubble point, and this is my dew point. So, for a given temperature, for a given pressure, uh, for a given temperature and given x, I get the value of Pb and Pd. However, this Pb and Pd for pure component are superimposed here on these points. So, what I do is, you know, I know that Pt diagram is drawn at a fixed composition. So, I fix a composition, I get Pb and Pd. So, now what I have a data, I have a data for temperature, bubble point pressure and dew point pressure for a fixed composition right now I change the composition to this 
and I get another PBPD. I change the composition. I get another PBPD. Change the composition. Another PBPD. Change it. Likewise, what I get is I get temperature and bubble point and dew point pressure. Temperature and dew point bubble point. Temperature and dew point bubble point. So what I need to do is I need to plot for a given composition temperature and bubble point dew point values, which eventually will give me this kind of curve. These are all you know bubble point and dew point. So this is one temperature bubble point dew point another temperature bubble point dew point and these three curves which have been shown they are drawn for a different com initial composition now this line corresponds to saturated liquid and this corresponds to saturated vapor concentrate on points a and b these are the points where you know saturated line liquid and saturated vapor are intersecting with each other saturated liquid and vapor are intersecting with each other this saturated vapor corresponds to overall composition which is nearer to component 1 whereas this is away from it. So if suppose if this is 80% 1 and this is 80% 1 then this saturated liquid corresponds to 0.6x1 and this saturated corresponds to 0.8y1. At this point A as you can see that we have same temperature for both the curves and same pressure for both the curves. So we can say that this point A gives me one equilibrium value p t x1 equal to 0.6 y1 equal to 0.8 same way if this is 0.4 say for example then point b gives me equilibrium value as this is my p this is my t and 0.4 x and 0.6 y uh, you know these are superimposed actually this is the plane wherein x y they are separated with some distance and the distance between this is nothing but the tie line drawn in a PXY diagram. This tie line, if we look at from this side, will be able to see that these two are superimposed on each other. So that's how you can, you know, explain the PD diagram for a given binary system. And this line is nothing but the, you know, uh, locus of the critical points. Now, critical point here needs some discussion. What does this critical mean more? Like you see that uh, critical point here is this. Now this is a typical and large portion of one such curve and we can see that this is a critical point that is not necessarily the highest pressure and highest temperature of this curve which is the case for a bi pure binary system. For more than one component critical point may be lying on saturated liquid or maybe on saturated vapor and due to that we may have different uh, you know uh, highest pressure point or highest temperature point this is known as max condensed bar point or creek condensed bar point or max condensed thumb point or creek condensed thumb point due to this thing near critical region there is a typical phenomenon which is taking place and that is known as retrograde condensation to discuss retrograde condensation, uh, I need to define some other properties and this retrograde condensation is helpful in determining the pressure and temperature of the reservoir. So we will talk about uh, retrograde condensation and summarize uh, you know, qualitative VLE behavior when we meet next time.